Of all the questions I get asked about mechanical keyboards, and one that I repeatedly asked myself not so long ago was, what keyboard should I start with? Today we're going to look at the NK65 from Novel Keys. That's right, this one with the missing key right here. And if you like tech giveaways for keyboards like that keyboard right there, stick around to the end of the video and we'll let you know how we do those. Welcome to Stupid Bullets Tech. The NK65 comes in an aluminum or a polycarbonate version, but if you're looking for a truly exceptional first time board to build that won't break the bank, the polycarb is the solution. Priced at just $95, all you have to do is add switches and the keycaps to your choice. With a variety of color options, there is something to fit most everyone, as well as making it easy to match a set of keycaps that look great. They also have a limited release version we'll talk about later. Unboxing the NK65 is a bit of a surprise, as they include a semi-hard shell travel case that is much better than it should be at this price level. And while there are certainly nicer keyboard cases out there, the fact that Novel Keys includes one this nice for a board that is less than $100 is really making a statement. Inside, you'll find the keyboard itself weighing in at 654 grams, a coiled cable that was stolen from Grandma's old wall phone, and a card that shows you where to get the programming software called VIA. While I tease a little bit about this cable, it looks much nicer than a straight version included with other offerings, if they even include one at all. Another win. Taking the board out of the case, you're going to find an injection molded polycarb board that is surprisingly well built. Everything is already assembled, so you could just add switches, caps, and be done. But as good as this board is for the money, a small amount of time and effort will make it so much better. The stabs are plate mounted and come pre-lubed, but there are usually inconsistencies here. So we cleaned and re-lubed ours with Crytox 205G0 on both the sliders and the wires. But dielectric grease on wires works very well and is much less expensive. They are easy to remove, just depress the tab with a small flathead screwdriver and they will tilt out. No force is required here. You could also clip these stabs if you wanted, but I wanted to build this board as a first time keyboard builder might, so I have skipped that for now. I will update this build at a later time with several mods including clipped stabs with a band-aid mod on the plate, as well as foam from Stupid Fish. If you have not tried their product, link below, I highly recommend it as it is excellent and a very affordable way to get a keyboard to sound so much better. Building this board can be done fairly quickly, but I would still take my time and do things slowly. The first step is to remove the screws to hold the case together. As always, I don't use power screwdrivers on any acrylic or polycarbonate keyboards as it is simply too easy to over tighten and strip something. The other suggestion I have for working on plastic anything is to not only tighten the screws partially in a random cross fashion, but to loosen the screws like this as well. This prevents undue stress on the last remaining screw and could save you from breaking something. After removing the screws, the top is lifted and separated from the bottom housing. This is also a great time to check out the silicon dampening pad that is included with the NK65. Boards like this can be hollow sounding at times but Novel Keys has really stepped up their game here by including this. As more companies fight for market share and a piece of the pie, I expect we will see additional things like this from others, and it's a win-win for all of us. Besides doing a very good job of dampening unwanted noise, the silicon pad also adds quite a bit of heft to the board, coming in at 239 grams all by itself. In addition to the other planned mods for a later date, I may try to dye this silicon red just because I have never done it before and I'm curious to see if it can be done. And that's part of the fun of custom keyboards, doing things your own way. At this point, I would not take anything else apart unless you were planning on doing some custom plate foam or some other mod. For the sake of science, I have taken this one apart so that I could show you the PCB and talk a little bit about hot swap sockets. The PCB is version 1.3 and designed by Yin Car from Cambridge in the UK. I've used their products many times in the past and I have never had a problem. The only thing I would have liked to see different on this board would be the USB on the left side, better yet, both sides, or maybe in the middle, but not on the right. Also, the RGB lighting on this board comes by the way of south facing switches. And while this is a benefit in the fact that you won't have a problem with cherry caps interfering with switches in the middle row, 
The shine through properties are diminished as they are not nearly as bright as north facing LEDs once the caps are installed. The LEDs on this unit are extremely bright though and I would much rather have this option than nice caps not working. If you ever choose to buy really nice GM key keycaps, RGB won't be high on your list anyway. The plate is a standard aluminum version. As a function of design, hot swap sockets should be held with your fingertip when pressing in switches to stop possible damage and separating themselves from the board. While it's rare, this simple step will remove any risk. After making sure your switch pins are straight, you hold the top half of the board in such a way as to allow a fingertip to press against the bottom side of the switch being inserted. Take your time, go slowly. The switches we have chosen for this board are something I have never tried before. The Gazoo Boba U4T Thocky Tactile Switch. While these have no film, as I wanted to stick to a first time builder theme, they have been custom hand dyed and match the board. If I were to suggest a switch for this or for any first time board builder, it would be Gator on Yellows as they offer a very good out of the box experience and rival switches costing three or four times as much if you lube and film them. I have some inbound and they will most likely find a permanent home in this keyboard in the future. I would love to take credit for this very well done die job, but that honor goes to Reddit user Jalapeno28. I will, in the updated version of this video, swap to different switches and most likely film these as well, but I wanted to hear them first. They have 68 gram springs and have been lightly lubed on the spring base and leaf only. If you want to learn more about hand dyeing Polly, just reach out to him on Reddit. Once you have all your switches plugged in, I would go to KeyboardTester.com and make sure that every one of them works. The NK65 is compatible with VIA, which is used to configure keyboards, as well as having an excellent switch tester option. If all the switches work fine, it's time to reassemble the base and install the keycaps. I had a set of keycaps from Philco. They are double shot PBT and can be had on Amazon for about 50 bucks. While they are not the least expensive option, they are certainly not the most, and they were yellow. At this point, I realized that. Anyone who could see more than three colors might balk at the idea of a red keyboard with yellow caps and purple legends. But having been called the fashion antichrist, I pressed on. Even though I realized it a little bit too late that I was missing the right cap for the board, I wanted to see how it sounded. Remember, sound tests are extremely subjective and there are simply too many variables to make them accurate your speakers, my microphone, post-processing, etc. However, I used a Rode NTG mic a few inches away from the keyboard on a single desk pad and no post-processing. Hence the fan noise in the background. Oh, and I type like a drunken three-fingered hobo. <laughs> I will need to find another set of caps for this build, but I will do that once I get the foam from Stupid Fish, in addition to the Gator on Yellow switches I have inbound. Novel Keys has done a good job with this keyboard. The price point of $95 makes it an absolute bargain. Besides the color combos we talked about at the beginning, they have a limited release version like the Super User, which I hope to get, and the Olivia, which I sadly missed out on. If they are watching, quite possibly they will look around the warehouse and find me one in the dark version, please. Pretty please. Tech giveaways have always been a big part of our Twitch channel. We do them regularly and rarely miss a week. If you would like to see how those work, just join us in stream on Monday, Friday, and Saturday, 6 to 9 p.m. PST. We also have started doing YouTube giveaways and there is still plenty of time to grab an entry for this custom built Karina with tangerine switches. Link here. Thanks for supporting an old gamer with your subs and your comments and thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be good to yourselves.